No one was hurt in this accident because there was nothing accidental about it. To make a stunt like that work, and above all to make it safe, it has to be very carefully staged and executed with meticulous planning. We'd like to do as much damage as possible to the car, but no damage whatsoever to the driver. We need to know exactly the speed of the car, the angle of impact with the ramp, the distance the car will travel once it's left the ramp, how many times it will turn over and where it's going to finish up. But the most important factor is what will happen to the driver, the person inside. The stunt driver, of course, has to be fully qualified and experienced. And when doing that particular stunt, I was wearing this harness. It's a full five-point harness with extra broad straps and two across the shoulders. These two are very important. They stop the body moving upwards and your head hitting the roof as the car bounces on its roof as it turns over. At the end of the stunt, or in an emergency, I simply operate the quick release and I'm free to get out of the car very quickly. The most vulnerable part of the body in any situation like this is the head and we protect this with a neck brace stops the head flopping about and with a helmet protect the skull but even the best helmet in the world is not good enough if the roof should collapse and we know it's going to because we're going to roll the car a full safety cage roll cage like this is fitted inside the car and it will create a safe space around the driver the other main risk, of course, is fire. To minimise this risk, we have the smallest possible amount of petrol in the car and we wear a complete fire suit. It is my job to make the stunt as safe as possible, recognising all the risks involved and bringing the level of risk down to an absolute minimum. Only when I'm satisfied do we do the job. We don't take chances. Careful preparation is the key to safety on a film set. But planning ahead isn't always easy in real life. Accidents usually happen when you're least expecting them. But some places are certainly more hazardous than others. Take a school, for instance. Where do you think you're most likely to have an accident? Some classrooms are dangerous, like places where there's electrical stuff. You can have an accident in craft rooms because they've got saws and hammers and stuff and drills that you catch yourself on. There's all sorts of sharp tools and things. Science slabs. There might be a bit broken glass around from broken test tube. And you could burn yourself on the buns and burners are the acids could burn you. You could hurt yourself playing sport because there's a lot of people and you can bump into them. When you're playing hockey, People are swinging sticks too high. You can get hit in your back or your arm or somewhere. Break time or dinner time can be quite dangerous because everyone's rushing to get outside. People barging past, knocking you with the bags, uh, stepping on your feet. More safe in English and maths uh, classrooms because there's nothing to fall over or cut yourself on. Less likely to have an accident in a classroom where everybody sat down. In fact, statistics show you're much more likely to have an accident in an ordinary classroom than in a science lab or a technology workshop. Surprisingly few accidents happen in science. So what do you think makes science so safe? And why are technology rooms also among the safest places in the school? In craft and science, everyone is made aware of possible dangers, and this reduces the risk of an accident. You're much more at risk when you least expect it, in the corridors or on the stairs. But top of the accidents list by a long way are the sports field and the gym. Even so, the overall number of accidents that happen at school is very low. 
So where are you most at risk? On the street? At home? Or at a leisure centre? Where are you most likely to have an accident? This may look like a safe place to be, but more injuries occur at home than anywhere else. See if any of these household hazards look familiar. Two of the most common substances swallowed by accident are medicines and cleaning fluids. It's easy to forget that household chemicals contain some of the same substances you'll find in a science lab. For instance, bleach contains sodium hypochlorite. Limescale remover contains sulfamic acid. And oven cleaner contains sodium hydroxide. These are all hazardous substances and need to be handled with care. Before a factory can sell household bleach in the shops, they have to make sure it's safe for domestic use. They start with sodium hypochlorite and add water to make it as dilute as possible. But household bleach is still an irritant. So how did they design a bottle to contain it safely? We sent scientific eyes Natalie Anderson to investigate. How do you make sure that the bottle is safe as possible for young children? One of the principal ways we, we try to avoid the danger is by applying a special cap which we call a child safety or a child resistant cap. To remove it you need to squeeze the sides where those little pads are and as you turn it that's it and unscrew it. So uh, hopefully people a lot younger than, younger than you wouldn't be able to uh, get that cap off quite so easily. Yeah but what about old people who've got arthritis and things? Aren't they going to find it hard to sort of, like squeeze on the, the top of a, the bottle? They can find it difficult to open. So we've made that particular cap taller so that they have more opportunity to yeah. get hold of it and make it slightly easier for them to get into. Because of course, if they can't get into it very easily, what they may well do is leave the cap off and then when their grandchildren come to visit, then obviously that's a problem. So we have to make it as easy as possible for them to use it as well as for children not to be able to get into it. The bottle contains a lot of information. Who decides what goes on it? Well, for products where there is a hazard, um, there is no decision to be made because there are regulations which tell us what has to go in the bottle so that all of the information in that box on the label mm -hmm. is prescribed by these regulations. So once we know what the hazard is, then the regulations tell us what symbol is to be used and what safety and risk phrases need to go on the bottle. Is the colour of the bottle important? Yes, it is. The, the most important thing about the colour really is that it needs to be bold. Um, 
both of those bottles there, although one of the bottles is white, the colours on it are pretty bold. Uh, and, and the blue bottle itself is a very vibrant colour. We do make other coloured bottles, for example, uh, there's a bright pink one there, and there's a fairly bright green one. So all of those bottles are, are, are nice and bright. It's obvious that people are going to take notice of the product that's in there. And just, just as a comparison, we wouldn't want to put bleach in a nice sort of pastel coloured bottle like that or that, because we want to give people the signal when they see the bottle that there's something in there that they need to be a little bit careful of. Yeah. So we are careful about the colours that we use, even though we do use a number of different colours. By understanding the hazards associated with household chemicals, it's possible to reduce the risk of an accident. But just how far should you go? What reasonable precautions should you take with household chemicals? A cold Monday morning in March, and an unusual structure has appeared in the centre of Newcastle. Preparations are made throughout the day, and as night falls, a huge tower topped by a raging furnace draws in the crowds. Catatone are a performance art group from France. Inside the furnace, there's 300 kilograms of molten metal at a temperature of 1500 degrees Celsius, which they're about to pour into a wooden box. So what's it all about? It's about the life of a statue, from its creation right up to the moment it's revealed to the public. So we recreate the factory and all the work and energy that goes into feeding this machine to make this piece of cast iron. It looks spectacular, but there are plenty of potential dangers. High temperatures and molten metal mean there's a risk of fire and burns, and working at height adds to the dangers. So, how do they make the performance safe? After all, they're artists, not metal workers. We've had to draw on the experience of foundrymen working in France, those who still pour molten metal. We've had to study to find out how to begin making a cast, and particularly what we had to know in terms of safety the equipment and the methods we had to use. You have to think about what you're making. You have to decide on your plan. We had to think very carefully about the weight the structure has to take, the furnace and the metal. Performing in the dark adds to the excitement, but it also increases the risks. You've always got to be looking up at what's going on overhead. All the time, all through the show, you've got to have one eye on the furnace, watching the guys up there to see how they're reacting. And clothing is crucial. To reduce the risk of burns, they all wear cotton, wool or leather, no synthetic fabrics. The most important thing right away is to protect yourself from the heat. That's professional, that. Military. It's completely flame-proof. You can literally throw it in the fire and it won't burn. It's leather. It's the best protection there is against fire, heat and so on. For my eyes, I use this. It's, it's like a visor, yeah? Pull this hat on, tight over my head. It's got two thicknesses of leather. Voilà. 
The company know how to look after themselves, but what about the general public? The performance is happening outdoors and in the street, and there's obviously a lot of passers-by, and therefore we have to make sure that the performing area is safe. What you have to do is carry out a risk assessment, establish what the risks are, and then minimise that as much as possible. In terms of planning, I started off with the police and talked to them first to see whether the, the area was suitable, what their feelings were about stewarding. We have to look into the fire brigade to make sure that we've got sufficient fire extinguishers. I think the key is communication. It's about talking to all of the right people. It's about making sure that the company knows what's happening, that the police know what's happening, that the fire brigade knows what's happening, so that they can tell me what they want from the show, how they think that it should be made safe, and then I have to implement it. Catatone perform their show in public all over Europe. The only way they can do this safely is by careful planning and thinking ahead. Safety is about recognising dangers and taking precautions. The same principles apply back in the science lab. So next time you're carrying out an investigation, what precautions should you take? You'll we'll have to be careful. Yeah. Acid. It may cause burns. Yeah. So you'll have to pour it in carefully, you know, so it doesn't splash everywhere. Yeah. Make sure it, it doesn't get anywhere close. If it does splash anywhere, make sure you um, wipe it up. Turn your hair back. Wear goggles. Make sure you don't get any of the acid on your skin. Use it for yeah. the mats. Yeah. 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 Wait till Got it's cold. Wait, wait till the tripod's yeah, cold down. Yeah, down. Yeah. If we use it, this is where you tie your hair back. Then we'll keep it on mat and that. Yellow flame, so yeah. you can see it. Be sensible. Yeah. Glassware shouldn't be on the edge. In case it's somebody adopts something this way. Do you know what it is exactly? Hydrogen. Hydrogen. Hydrogen gas, definitely no naked flames about yeah. because it yeah. pops, yeah. doesn't it? That's hydrogen. Hydrogen. Sort of cloth there. Hydrochloric acid. Make sure you're in a well vented yeah. thing. Yeah, and make sure that people know that you're doing an experiment that's dangerous yeah. so they don't swim again. Got light in that. No, that one stuff yeah. 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 What are your top ten safety tips for the science lab? There is, there is bubbles in here. Test tube. Where did the bubbles come from? That shows that it's reactive. 